Good morning, and thanks for joining us for Ask Me Anything with Planning Director Gwen Wright. My name is Marin Hill, and I'm a planner with Montgomery Planning. I'll be facilitating the discussion today. Um, so I'm going to give a few brief instructions in Spanish, and then I'll continue on with our English instructions before beginning Gwen's presentation. Bienvenidos y gracias por participar en Pregúntame Cualquier Cosa con di la directora de planificación, Gwen Wright. Yo me llamo Marin Hill y soy una planificadora y yo voy a fa facilitar esta charla hoy día. Si quieres escuchar en español, por favor, por teléfono, marque el número de teléfono en la pantalla y entra el conference ID. Gracias. So um, first, I just wanted to see how everyone's feeling today. I know these are challenging times. We're all experiencing some of the same challenges and also some really unique challenges to our families and situations. And some days can be easier or harder than others. Um, so while I'm going over logistics, feel free to share a word or two in our chat box um, to let us know how you're feeling right now. So Teams Live might be a new technology for you. Uh, it is for us. This is our only our second time using it to host an event. Um, so if you have any questions at any time about uh, how to access the chat or how to participate, feel free to uh, type it in the chat box and we'll try to get back to you as fast as possible. The event is going to be recorded and posted on our website, uh, thrivemontgomery.com. All the conversations will be saved and shared with the planning staff that are working on Thrive Montgomery 2050 update to the general plan. You can post comments or questions in the chat um, at any time. This will be visible to everyone who is participating. When you do, if you join the chat anonymously, we just ask that you write your name in. Um, there's a space right above where you write your chat to write your name in so that we can identify you. And you can see up on the screen right now that little red circle around um, the conversation bubbles, that's how you access the chat. Unfortunately, people will not be able to um, speak during the event. So, uh, and if you're listening in Spanish, we do ask that you mute, uh, mute yourself so you don't distract the translator, um, but you can chat throughout the event. We also ask that you be respectful in your comments. Comments that use profane language will be dismissed and will not be shared in the chat. Finally, if you want to go to full screen, you will see that line with the two arrows um, and you can click that to go full screen. Okay, um, well, thanks again for tuning in. I'm gonna play the presentation and then we're gonna jump into some questions and answers with, uh, with Gwen Wright, thanks. Hi, I'm Gwen Wright, Planning Director in Montgomery County, Maryland, and welcome to Ask Me Anything. This is an opportunity to talk about Thrive Montgomery 2050, which is our update to Montgomery County's general plan, and to uh, hear from you about some of the ideas that uh, are coming up as part of that effort. So I'd like to share a PowerPoint presentation with you, and then we will move into the question and answer phase of the event. So as I mentioned, this is Ask Me Anything, and uh, we are going to go through a few slides, but then get into a uh, opportunity for you to uh, ask questions, raise, raise issues, or talk about anything related to the general plan you'd like to talk about. Again, I'm uh, Gwen Wright, Montgomery County Planning Director, and I'm uh, really happy to be with you today. Uh, one of the things that the general plan is about is, a, is about imagining the future and thinking about what, uh, what the future holds for Montgomery County. We've been uh, talking to a lot of people in the community and our planners have been putting their uh, thoughts together and what we want to do is ask you to let your imagination uh, go wild and think about what Montgomery County in 2050 will be. Uh, some of the things we've thought about are um, 
picturing vibrant gathering places and open spaces in every neighborhood, uh, a theme that we're calling complete communities. Uh, picturing that everything you might need is within a 15 minute walk from home without the need to jump in the car and travel long distances. Certainly as we're all um, working through this COVID-19 um, crisis, uh, I, I'm sure we've all thought about how nice it would be to be able to have quick and easy access to our drug stores, to our grocery stores, uh, and not have to uh, feel uh, quite so isolated in our, our neighborhoods. Um, we have been picturing our county roads as safe, walkable, and beautiful boulevards. We've talked about that concept a lot over the last few years, but we really haven't accomplished it. And uh, it, is, it is a really important direction to move. Um, picturing housing as right uh, with more affordable and attainable housing options. And, and we really like that term attainable because it's not about government subsidized affordable housing. It's about housing that is attainable to our children and grandchildren to enter the real estate market with starter homes that's attainable for older people who want to continue to live in their neighborhood, but maybe want to move out of their single family homes. So those are some of the, the ideas that have been running through our imagination, and we're going to uh, ask you to, to share some of yours. So what is Thrive Montgomery 2050? It's an, it is an update to our general plan, which was last comprehensively updated in 1969, more than 50 years ago. It's a long range vision for the future of the county that deals with future initiatives, countywide policies, uh, infrastructure, community amenities, private development, but it does not go in and change the zoning on any piece of property. What it is, as I've, I've described it to my own staff, is it sets our work program for the next 10 to 20 years in terms of thinking about new programs, new master plans, new projects that we should be undertaking to realize what is hopefully a uh, exciting and, and um, agreed upon vision for how the county is going to grow. When we did our 1969 general plan, um, there were a lot of ideas that were discussed, but they weren't implemented in 1969. Again, a general plan does not immediately change zoning or change master plans. So when the 1969 plan talked about increasing affordable housing, that resulted uh, in uh, the early 70s in our moderately priced dwelling unit law. When that plan talked about protecting farmland, that resulted in 1980 with our preservation of agriculture and rural open space plan, the Ag Reserve, and transfer of development rights. When it talked about guiding the timely installation of needed infrastructure, that resulted in the early 70s in our adequate public facilities ordinance. So if our Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is successful, people will look back in the year 2050 and say, wow, these new programs and ideas that have been implemented all started in 2020 when that general plan was updated and when they laid out ideas for new policies and actions that would guide the future of the county. Why are we doing an update to the general plan now? As mentioned, it's over 50 years old, but more than that, uh, the county has changed from a suburban bedroom community to a community of diverse employment centers of areas that are very urban, uh, including still our suburban and rural communities, but we have some other communities that are very urban uh, with all the, the challenges and advantages that go with that. 
we have a, a projected growth of 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, and we need to think about where those new residents are going to live. We have changing technologies and cultural shifts, and we'll talk more about that, but the fact that I'm um, sharing this presentation with you over the internet, I'm sitting in my dining room at a laptop, and speaking to all of you talks directly to the new technologies, the new ways of communicating, the new ways of relating that we have. As we move into the 21st century, as again, as a county, we're going to need to embrace urbanism for certain portions of the county. We need to think about how we can grow and thrive in a more urban way in many, many parts of the county. Just to reinforce some of the changes that I've just mentioned, one of the, the biggest cultural shifts is the change in county demographics. These images show you are uh, based on census track, our predominant racial or ethnic group in 1990. On the left, in, uh, 19, and in 2016 on the right, uh, the dark blue is uh, predominantly white. You can see how much of that was in the county in 1990 and how that has changed dramatically in 2016. We are now a county where the majority of our residents are people of color, and that is going to continue um, over the next 30 years. We have an increasingly older population. Again, as you can see by 2040, it looks like about 46% of our residents will be over the age of 45. That um, is a big change and it is something we must account for as a county. More people are working from home. Well, you're not kidding. <laughs> right now, it's a large number of people working from home. Uh, in 2016, it was 6.2%, which was a large increase from 1990. But I would guess by 2050, that number is going to be much, much higher, possibly even getting close to 50%. Uh, we have learned through this COVID-19 crisis that it is possible to, to work from home, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. We have done a great deal of outreach, and I'm, I'm very, very proud that we have reached out to people all over the county and in different uh, ways so that we've heard the voices of residents who don't normally participate in the planning process. And what have we heard? Well, one of the big things we've heard is the rent is too darn high. We've also heard about traffic, but we've also heard other things such as we'd like to have mixed income communities and mixed income schools. We don't want to see more houses in the Ag Reserve, we want to protect that important resource. We must relieve the congestion along I-270. Uh, we need to attract independent businesses. Uh, I think that the, the interest in entrepreneurship and in small business came across at so many of our uh, outreach activities. When you think about it, Marriott Corporation was an entrepreneurial small business started in Montgomery County probably about 60, 70 years ago. What is the next Marriott Corporation going to be for Montgomery County? What's the next entrepreneurial small business going to be that turns out to be a major, major corporation? Our current land use uh, offers up some challenges. About 35% of the county is uh, in single family zoning and uh, about 43-44% uh, of the county is in agriculture and parks. What that means is that we have very little unconstrained land left. According to uh, this chart that we've updated recently, only about 15 percent 
of the land in the county is unconstrained. And what that means is one major um, reality that the Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is going to have to uh, deal with and that we're all going to have to shift in our thinking is that our future growth as a county is infill, not greenfields, but infill, adaptive reuse of existing buildings, building on pieces of land that maybe we did not think ever would be built upon. One of our favorite sayings at the planning department is uh, we are turning parking lots into places. We need to consider every kind of um, potential site as an infill site in order to accommodate the kinds of growth that we project in the future. Another reality uh, is that our housing growth is not meeting the needs of our growing population. The number of units produced per year has dropped dramatically in the last 30 years. And if we are going to, again, have 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, we are going to have to have more housing in more places of more types using different building materials, using different kinds of buildings, and we cannot uh, continue on the path that we're on or we will um, not have enough housing and housing prices will continue to rise and become unattainable and unaffordable. When we started general plan, we said, what are our three major outcomes that we want to achieve? What, what's really our framework? And we decided really that economic health, community equity, and environmental resilience were the three major outcomes uh, for Thrive Montgomery. And Thrive, I also want to mention, is an important word because we all agree Montgomery County is a great place right now to live and work and play, but we cannot rest on our past successes. If we are going to address some of the challenges of the future that I just described, whether it be the need for more housing or um, the fact that we have uh, communities that uh, have very, very significant traffic problems or the fact that we have communities with significant uh, equity issues. If we're going to address those kinds of problems and not just live with the status quo, we are going to have to make changes. We are going to have to make shifts in the way we uh, see the county and how we see it grow. And that is going to be necessary for us to move beyond the status quo and to move into thriving in the 21st century. All of this has resulted in a, uh, a vision for Montgomery County that, that is the result of a lot of the feedback we've gotten at our outreach uh, feedback we've gotten from the planning board and from the county council about some of our initial ideas. So we believe that the vision for the county in 2050 is no longer just one central corridor, I-270, uh, surrounded by large uh, wedges in the rest of the county, but really a web of complete communities connected by vibrant corridors. And those complete communities are individual and unique centers of neighborhood activity and urban nodes that optimize land use with a variety of housing types and price points and are close to transit, workplaces, needed goods and services, public amenities and active park spaces. We have many, many great communities in the county and we want to assure that they are complete, that they have all of the elements that are needed to uh, create a complete community. We want to see those communities connected by vibrant corridors, corridors that are not just how you get from here to there, but are comfortable, 
safe, multimodal transportation corridors with housing and services along those corridors. We also want to optimize our corridors of green parks, stream valleys, and trails to provide additional ways to connect communities throughout the county. We have looked at all of our um, issues and ideas and, and categorized them into uh, eight significant goals. All of those goals are related to our three uh, outcomes, our framework of economic health, environmental resilience, and community equity. But we feel like the policies and actions that need to be considered fall into these eight categories. Safe and efficient travel, complete communities, diverse and adaptable growth, connectedness, affordability and attainability, diverse economies, a healthy and sustainable environment, and culture and design. To uh, get to the vision that uh, I've just been describing to address the many uh, issues and challenges we have, we have to we have to deal with some big shifts as a county, and uh, we want to identify some of those big shifts that are going to inform our policies and actions. First of all, um, again, we have to understand that we are not a bedroom suburban community anymore, that urbanism is a good thing and many parts of our county are urban. Uh, corridors connecting these nodes are the future. And in each of these nodes, we want to have 15 minute living where you're able to get to everything you need, including work, schools, um, recreational facilities, healthcare in 15 minutes. Uh, as we all, again, experience the COVID-19 crisis, uh, what we want to make sure is that people aren't isolated in their homes and neighborhoods, but have the ability to get to the drugstore, to purchase drugs, to get to a grocery store, to uh, get to places where they can take a walk and experience the outdoors. All in 15 minutes of walking or biking. Active lifestyles, they equal not only health, but also the, the social connectedness that is so important. Again, what we've experienced as an, a real need over the last couple of months of quarantine is that we need connections of people and places and that uh, active lifestyles, the 15 minute living, all of these are elements and ways to build on that social connectedness. We also need to begin to think of housing as a right and a value, uh, that we need housing to not just be government subsidized affordable, but we need it to be attainable to the younger generation coming up, but also to the older generation who is thinking about leaving their single family home, but want to stay in their existing neighborhood. Major roads needs, need to be transformed into boulevards. And we're gonna talk about that more, but a big part of that is that we have to stop planning for cars and we need to depave the county. That's again, the parking lots to places idea, but it, it even goes beyond that. We need to have um, the least possible uh, paving in both our um, public rights of ways, but also in our uh, new development and growth. We need varieties of commercial uses. We completely support and need our large employers and our government um, campuses like NIH and FDA, but we need 
smaller businesses. We need entrepreneurs. We need people willing to have businesses in our complete communities and along our corridors. Uh, it is a mix of uses that is necessary to really create this sense of a complete community. We need regional solutions to problems. We often think pretty uh, insularly in Montgomery County, and we need to stop that. We need to start thinking regionally uh, about how we can connect from a transportation standpoint, how we can handle many of our housing problems, how we can uh, deal with uh, te technological issues and solutions uh, on a regional basis. Diversity is our strength, not only our diversity of uh, racial, ethnic, and, and heritage, but our diversity of place, the fact that we are urban, suburban, and rural. That is our strength as a county. We are a, a really um, complex and strong web of places and people. And finally, we have to embrace that importance of place. We need to understand that people do want to come together. It is part of our social fabric. We need to have places to do that in every community. We need to encourage placemaking uh, with um, appropriate public art, appropriate design of public spaces, and with great architecture. We deserve to have the highest quality places in this region. And I think we need to demand great design and, and move forward with great places. Just to highlight a few of those topics, when we talk about corridors, you see Rockville Pike on the left and 14th Street in DC on the right. Lots to learn from these images. What's important is, hap is what happens not only outside the right of way, creating great buildings and um, great architecture, but also what happens within the right of way. Uh, getting rid of overhead utilities having wide sidewalks, having uh, streets that have bike paths, strong crosswalks and frequent crosswalks, uh, places for on-street parking. All of these things go to take a large swath of asphalt and make it more human, making it safer for pedestrians and creating a corridor that people want to walk up and down and that they want to populate. Again, the parking lots to places idea on the upper portion of this slide on the left, you see the old mid Pike Plaza with its giant parking lot. On the right, you see Pike and Rose, where that parking lot has been developed into smaller, more manageable blocks with green roofs, parks, treed areas, um, solar panels, uh, ways to make it a more uh, humane place that people want to populate, where they want to stop, where they want to socialize and gather. On the regional solution side, I'll just show this one image which relates to transportation, although I've mentioned it could, we can think about many, many issues on a regional basis. In this, it's looking how we can extend transit to really, really make those connections with our neighbors in Prince George's County, the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, and of course, our neighbors to the north in Frederick and Howard counties. Transit is the solution. It is really the, the most important solution. And we uh, think there are lots of opportunities to connect uh, on a regional basis. Finally, embracing the importance of place. Again, this is a great image because it shows people coming together to enjoy Frankly, what's a parking lot, but it's been turned into a farmer's market and it's become 
a place. We can do this on all scales and at all levels where we are going to create places that are gathering spots, that are opportunities for our communities to have, to have focus, to have identity. Um, we're all craving those kinds of locations, especially now during the time of, of, of quarantine. But when we embrace that importance of place, we need to make sure to demand that those places are the best that they can be, that we have a high quality of design, of landscape design, of park design, of public art, and of placemaking of all types. Just to uh, end up with our project timeline, we have been working hard for nearly a year now, uh, looking at the trends, looking at the issues, drafting visions and goals, doing a lot of outreach, reporting back into our planning board and our county council. Where we are now is uh, where the rubber meets the road. We're working on drafting some detailed policies and actions that will be presented to the planning board on June 11th. And we want to hear from you. That is why we are doing this event and others. We would like to hear if we're headed in the right direction. Our working draft will be out in September 2020 with a planning board public hearing in the fall and transmittal to the council in March of 2021. And the council will be reviewing and hopefully approving this Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan in April or May of uh, 2021. So that concludes the presentation. What we're really interested in now is what questions or comments do you have about Thrive Montgomery 2050? Share your comments in the chat and I am thrilled to talk about this very, very special and important project. All right. Um, well, thank you again for coming and participating. I just wanted to remind everyone that we had a lot of questions pour in, so people seems like are finding ways to access the chat. Um, on many screens, it shows up uh, where that red circle is, um, but we did have Steve let us know um, in the chat that it shows up differently on his screen, so it might be that there's just a ask a question bar that comes up. Um, so let us know if it shows up differently on your screen and please feel free to keep commenting or um, have conversations with the uh, questions and comments that have already been posed in the chat. So Gwen, I wanted to start out, um, we've heard from a lot of people um, and um, one of the questions that we had come up was if you think that people will be living differently because of Thrive 2050. Um. Thanks, Maren, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, it's uh, great to um, be here this morning, and I'm uh, I'm really fascinated and uh, excited by the questions I've seen pop up in the um, in the chat. Uh, I think that people will be living differently in 2050, and I think that this document, this effort that we're doing is a way to try to uh, get in front of that and to try to put in place the policies and actions that are necessary for uh, how people are going to live in 2050. It's not necessarily that this document is going to change everything. It's that this document is going to be a way to respond to the changes we see happening around us, both rapidly and, and gradually. And um, we have to uh, embrace that change and figure out how we put the right uh, public policies and actions into place to really manage that change. Thanks. So um, we had a question from AZ in the chats and AZ says um, that, you know, COVID has shown us how much work can be done by teleworking. 
and wants to know if there's a way that Thrive 2050 uh, can encourage more of it somehow in the future once the pandemic has passed. Um, because one thing that they've seen is that it's been really helpful at reducing traffic and um, it could possibly save us money on road and highway spending in the future. Sure. And, you know, again, I think this is a situation where um, we are um, responding to events that are happening very, very quickly. Uh, I do believe that we are not going to go back to our previous methods of uh, working after even after this pandemic. I think we've all seen how easy it is to telework. And I think that we're going to see a much higher percentage of telework happening, um, maybe up to 50%, as I said in, in the video. I think we're going to see a huge number of people teleworking. And that's going to change how we are as a, as a society. It's going to change how we uh, work. It's going to change how we uh, interact with each other. Uh, how many of us, you know, have a lot of our social interactions through our work. And if that's all being done through telework, we're going to be looking for other options and other ways to make that make that connection. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of people had questions and were fascinated with the ideas of 15 minute living. Um, so we had a question from Wendy Calhoun. I'm going to give you a couple on uh, complete communities. Is um, does this in, do the complete communities um, include schools? Um, and um, we had another question from Norm Gordon, who says that uh, he lives in a pretty dense area in Germantown, but there's nothing to access except for residences in uh, within a 15 minute walk. So how is Thrive going to overcome the 60s and 70s uh, suburban sprawl planning um, to achieve this goal? And then one last question from Seth Grimes is um, that it says that the, you had mentioned that the plan doesn't envision rezoning. Could you please elaborate? Um, does that mean that there aren't going to be changes uh, to the zoning um, code? Great, so I'll take the last of those questions first because those really are three distinct and different questions. Um, what I was um, mentioning is that the general plan is a policy document. It in and of itself does not result in a district map amendment or sectional map amendment that changes the zoning on any piece of property. The general plan as a policy document lays out uh, an action plan, if you want to call it that, for looking at a series of issues in the county. And those may result in updates to master plans, in the creation of new master plans, and other changes to the zoning code, all of which, again, ultimately may result in rezonings, may result in uh, changes in land use, but this document as a policy document does not actually make those changes. It lays out an action plan for how to consider making those changes uh, that are necessary. So that's the answer to the zoning question. I want to address the schools question, and I do want to say that I do believe that we need more neighborhood schools. I think that it is important to try to move away from the model that we have been moving towards over the last 20, 30 years of larger and larger schools, uh, young people having to travel farther and farther to get to their school. I think it's very important as part of complete communities to have easy access to schools, including I think in uh, Wendy Calhoun's uh, chat, including elementary, middle, and high schools. It is a challenge to do that. And I understand that uh, the Montgomery County uh, public schools have concerns about their ability to do that and to provide staffing for a large number of smaller schools. But I think that the reality is that 
Um, schools are an incredibly important part of communities and we need to go back to the idea of people being able to, to walk to school. It shouldn't be that every student has to take a bus in order to get to their school. Um, and so I do believe that one of the ideas, one of the, the, the visions in this particular plan is to take a look at trying to get back to the, the concept of neighborhood schools. Um, the third question is the most fascinating, I think, of all, which is how do we retrofit communities that maybe were developed in the 60s and 70s that have no mix of uses? And I think the person who wrote in mentioned, you know, during the uh, current uh, COVID-19 crisis, you know, they're in a neighborhood where they can't walk to anything. They are completely surrounded only by residential uses. Well, this is where we are hoping that the corridor idea may help with some of those communities that are quite isolated. Many of those communities are in relatively close proximity to busy, busy corridors that have had some residential use along them. And we are hoping that as we look at corridors uh, becoming a mix of uh, housing uses, also becoming a mix of other kinds of um, commercial and retail uses, so that people who are in a neighborhood at least can be able to get within 15 minutes to their corridor and be able to uh, get to uh, some other mix of uses. I mean, it's it's so so uh, important in this concept of complete communities. I know that there were some general questions about what are complete communities. Um, and, you know, I, I'm going to use an example of a place here in Montgomery County. I think Kensington is a complete community. Kensington has lots of great stable single family neighborhoods, but almost all of them within a short period of time can walk to all of the assets that they need, such as a grocery store, uh, a uh, healthcare, there's a large Kaiser Permanente uh, facility in Kensington, to uh, schools, um, to all of the kinds of things we think of as complete communities. And they have transit, they have a mark station. They also have great bus service on Connecticut Avenue. And so, you know, I, I think that it's not impossible for us to try to, in essence, retrofit other communities to be a little bit more like Kensington, to have some of those kinds of complete community assets on their major corridors, but still maintain the great neighborhoods that also exist. One thing I will also mention, I know I want to get back to responding to, to some of the chats, is that what you need, though, to create um, the transit that's so important and to create the commercial, the, the, the um, ability to have commercial uses is you need some density. The corridors are going to have to have some density because otherwise you aren't going to get transit along those corridors and you aren't going to get um, commercial uses, stores and restaurants and, uh, uh, you know, drug stores, <laughs> grocery stores, they can't exist unless there's enough density of people to use them. And so we have to accept that certain areas, including some of our nodes and some of our corridors are going to have to have increased density, not only to find places for those famous 200,000 people that we are expecting in the next 30 or 40 years, but also to get the assets of a complete community that we've been been talking about. So back to you. What other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Gwen. Um, so we had a question that a lot of these issues seem so urgent um, and that they can't imagine waiting 15 years until housing is affordable and attainable in Montgomery County. How can we start implementing Thrive 2050 today? 
That's a great question. And what I uh, want to say is we have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. And we are doing that. In addition to working on this general plan, we're working today on um, a preservation of uh, existing affordable housing study. We're working on um, a housing assessment, uh, a housing needs assessment for the whole county. We're working closely with our colleagues in the executive branch at DEP and Department of Housing and Community Affairs to talk about what kinds of changes need to happen to respond to the, the, the needs and the shifts that we're seeing. We're doing master plans. Some of you participated perhaps in the recent Forest Glen Montgomery Hills master plan where we really were talking about nodes and corridors. We were trying to build uh, up the nodes around the Forest Glen Metro Station and we were uh, trying to really uh, strengthen that corridor in Montgomery Hills. Again, that's another great example of a corridor which, if strengthened, is a great asset to creating complete communities for the neighborhoods that are directly adjacent to that corridor. Um, so we are doing master plans now to try to promote some of these ideas, and we are working closely on uh, a lot of affordable and attainable housing ideas. One last thing I'll mention is our missing middle study. We worked to look at why, why missing middle might be a good solution to provide a diversity of housing types and how that might be implemented. And we are continuing to uh, work on that because missing middle type housing is one way to densify our corridors and to create um, neighborhoods along our corridors that are not just, um, uh, again, you know, I think another question is, that does infill meet, mean high rise? Not necessarily. I think we, are, when we talk about infill, we're talking about all scales of infill. And on some corridors, it might mean high rise, but on other corridors, it may mean missing middle scale housing. That's why when this uh, general plan is done, we need to do some individual corridor master plans. People had questions about equity and how the plan will address the both perceived and real east-west divide within the county um, in terms of equity. Equity is one of the major uh, parts of the framework of this document. It is one of our goals and equity is um, so important because as mentioned we are becoming uh, a increasingly diverse, diverse community. We have not just an east-west divide, we have a north-south divide, which I think isn't discussed as often. Some of our most diverse communities are in places like Germantown, um, and we have to figure out ways to make sure that everyone has equal access to housing, to schools, to all of the uh, assets that we've talked about as a, a complete community. Um, and I think that the, the way to do that is, you know, of course, number one, we have to talk about it. We, we can't uh, be um, silent and not acknowledge the divides that exist in Montgomery County. They do exist. Uh, we have to think about ways to make uh, our perhaps more disadvantaged communities um, more advantaged. We have to give the incentives to create great new development that has new residents moving into those communities. We have to make sure that the public 
uh, facilities, whether they be rec centers or schools or um, other kinds of government buildings are of the highest quality and get uh, the kinds of um, uh, renovations and upgrades that other parts of the, the county get. We have to make sure that every resident has the access to jobs. And uh, that means creating better transit, particularly in more disadvantaged parts of the county because uh, traveling to jobs is, uh, is an incredibly important, um, important need. Uh, and so uh, I think that we do acknowledge not just the east-west divide, but the north-south divide. We acknowledge that there are parts of Montgomery County that are not um, equitable at this time. And I think that, again, this document as a policy document is looking to put some policies into place that may address those issues. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, another question that we had, we mentioned the north-south divide and um, we had a question about gateway communities or future urban nodes on the edge of the ag reserve to allow for 15 minute living for the population outside of downtown. Is there any consideration of that in Thrive 2050? Yeah, and there is. And one of the things I want to emphasize is complete communities do not necessarily mean high density, high rise neighborhoods. Uh, you know, Bethesda, I think, is a complete community in many ways, but we are not saying that every place in the county has to become Bethesda. I mentioned Kensington because I think that's a great example of a lower density, complete community that has all of those assets of a, of a complete community. I think that uh, we do need to look at uh, the nodes that exist outside of our typical urban areas and strengthen those places like Olney or places like Ashton. We're in the midst right now of doing uh, an Ashton plan with, again, the idea of strengthening that small crossroads to be more of a complete community that will serve not only people who may live right in Ashton, but the people who serve, uh, the, I'm sorry, the people who live in the areas to the, to the north and east of Ashton, which are in part of our ag reserve. We need to look at, you know, the, this actually, dare I say it, the third rail, Potomac Village. You know, is that a community that is complete? Should it be uh, become more complete as a, a place for people who are in the Ag Reserve to be able to access? So I think there are nodes that exist um, throughout the, the county. And I think that complete communities can be at almost any scale. Thank you. Thank you. We had a lot of back and forth in the uh, comment uh, chat that uh, about depaving the county. Um, we had some people who were concerned about what it would mean for parking and cars and other people who are excited about what it might mean for biking and walking and other modes of transportation um, and also parks and public open space. Would you talk a little bit about uh, what you mean when you say depaving the county? Yeah, um, you know, depaving the county is important on so many levels. Um, first, it's important from an environmental perspective. We all have seen the um, impact of climate change. We're seeing the, um, the floods that happen when there's, a, you know, a heavy rain. So many of our communities are experiencing uh, problems with stormwater. So we have to depave as an environmental uh, just um, uh, crisis. We have to we have to depave in, in response to that. But we also can depave in a way that supports some of our other goals of 
connect connectedness, complete communities, active living. When we depave on the within rights of way, we can create other kinds of mobility um, uh, access. We can take a lane and turn it into a a uh, bike lane or a transit lane. Uh, we've seen that in the District of Columbia where certain lanes have been turned into bus only lanes or lanes have been turned into bike lanes. All of that is possible. Um, we also on uh, the parking lots to places idea, those giant parking lots that we have in so many parts of the county, they're, they're terrible from an environmental perspective because they none of them had stormwater management uh, facilities when they were originally built. So they are just dumping contaminated water into our streams. Um, when we turn parking lots into places, we are creating places that have not only better stormwater, but have more green. Again, just think about Pike and Rose. When it was uh, mid Pike Plaza, there wasn't a tree in sight. It uh, was just a, a huge expanse of concrete. When you walk down today a street through Pike and Rose, there are street trees, there are um, small green areas uh, for people to stop and rest in the shade or have their children uh, play in one of the the small facilities that they've created. There are small pieces essentially of open space and 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 parkland, although not owned by our parks department, that um, people can use. So it, it's it's much greener. And I think again, there's also the stormwater management that is offered, including green roofs. Um, they even have a rooftop farm in Pike and Rose. I, I just use that as an example to show how you can both uh, achieve better environmental results, but you can also create a great place that is visibly greener than what was there before. Thank you. Thank you. And this is gonna be our last question, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so how do we encourage improvements that we've talked about, you know, like tree canopy, um, more amenities for walking and biking without using losing the the local flavor of places and preserving some of the small businesses that are already in parts of our county so that not everything is converted into, um, you know, larger chains and national stores? Well, that's that's a challenge. Uh, you know, we're all seeing through the COVID-19 crisis how hard it is on small businesses. And I think that this is going to be something uh, to, to support small businesses. We are going to need uh, some government interventions, which are happening today, but they may be, have to be uh, a long term. We also need to provide the right uh, zoning the right kinds of spaces to allow small businesses to thrive. What again small businesses need is people to shop in those small businesses. So they need some density around them. They need to have people who are going to be in proximity to their small businesses and be able to uh, use those businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's sort of part of the complete communities idea, but it is a big, that is probably the biggest shift uh, that we are looking at in this general plan that's going to be um, challenging for people to, um, to adapt to. Thanks so Thanks much, so Gwen, much. for taking the time to answer these questions. And thank you everyone for participating and for the lively discussion in the chat box. Um, I just posted a chat saying that our these questions and comments will be passed along to staff. So if we didn't get to your um, question or didn't address your comment during the meeting, we will um, we will try to follow up um, and um, and address them and have discussions with them uh, for Thrive 2050. 
Just a few dates to keep in mind. Uh, the draft policies and actions, which are kind of like the, the meat and the how-to of Thrive 2050 will be presented to the planning board on June 11th. So please tune in. Um, we're also going to be hosting other virtual meetings uh, throughout June that we're calling community chats that will be focused on the specific issue areas. So if you have um, a section that really speaks to you, like affordable and attainable housing, you can take part in that chat specifically, um, but you're free to take part in as many as you want. Um, there are a few ways to get a hold of us that you can see our website at the bottom. Um, you can also reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, um, and use the hashtag Thrive Montgomery. Um, finally, you can email us at thrive2050 at montgomeryplanning.org, um, and I'll drop this information in the chat for those of you that want it. Um, but thank you so much uh, for coming and participating. We have another one on Monday that will have the same presentation, but we'll have a new discussion all over again. So feel free to participate Monday at noon. Thank you.